Welcome back to my channel. I am Neha Parashar, working in a healthcare company and based in Germany. In our last video, we talked about the nine skill sets which are required to make career in regulatory affairs. After that, many people keep asking me, Neha, okay, now we know what are the skill sets required to make career in this field. But how can we start our career in this field? Can you focus on the how part of it? So I thought we'll tackle this topic in today's video. So let's start. Imagine being the person who ensures that life-saving drug reaches to the patient safely and ethically, right? And that's what regulatory affair in the pharmaceutical industry is all about. So if you are interested in pursuing your career path in regulatory affair, let's break this journey step by step and, and see how you can get started. Step one is get formal education. So the first and foremost criteria are getting education and beginning with the basics, right? Study biology, chemistry, pharmacy, or any other related fields. If you are very sure that you would like to start your career in regulatory affairs, then you can consider courses, degree, or certifications that focus on regulatory affairs. There are various universities worldwide which offers masters in regulatory affairs, so you can opt for it. One such university is Northeastern University in USA and Naipur Hyderabad in India. So these universities, they provide masters in regulatory affairs. So if you are already clear during your graduation that you want to make career in regulatory affairs, do your masters from these university in the regulatory affairs, right? But if you did not do your masters in the regulatory affairs, that's not a problem as you can do your masters in any of the department, but still start your career in this field. If I have to give you my example, I did my master's in pharmaceutical analysis and then started my career in this field. During my master's, I got so fascinated about this regulatory affairs field that the first company that came for a campus interview in my university, I told them my area of interest. Um, and I told them that I would like to start my career in regulatory affairs. And here I am today, right? Yes, that is possible. So you have to drive your career and you should know where do you want to go and you have to speak about it. So having masters in regulatory affairs is good, but it's not must to have. You can do your masters in pharmaceutics, pharmaceutical analysis, pharmacology, pharmacoinformatics and so on in any of the branches, right? But you can still start your career in regulatory affairs. Why I'm saying this? Because lots of people or lots of young professionals keep asking me, Neha, is that possible that I'm doing masters in um, pharmaceutics or pharmaceutical analysis or pharmacology or any other branches? But can I start my career in regulatory affairs? So the answer is yes. Doing masters in regulatory affairs is good to have, but it's not must to have. Then the next step is gain experience. Start working on the puzzles. By that, I mean start internship or entry level positions that allow you to understand the regulations and guidelines. So if you are fresher, you can look for opportunities in pharmaceutical companies, regulatory agencies or consultancies. You can also seek help with the LinkedIn network or connect by a cold email with the people from the same field, right? So they, there are people who wants to help you, but you have to reach out to them, right? Next step is develop your key skills. You need to develop the critical skill sets required for this field. What are those critical skills? Understanding of regulations and guidelines, scientific knowledge, detailed oriented approach, communication skills, strategic thinking, problem solving skills, negotiation skills, and my favorite adoptability and continuous learning, team collaboration and project management skills, and understanding technology. So we covered all these nine skill sets in my previous video in detail. You can check that videos out for all must to have skill sets for regulatory affair person. So you can check those videos out to know why do we need all these skill sets. Then the next skill is join professional groups. You can find some friends who share your interest. You can join regulatory affairs societies or networks. One such group is regulatory affairs professional society that's RAP and TOPRA that is the organizational for professions in regulatory affairs. So these kind of group, they provide some valuable resources, conferences and connections to you, which can help you to start your career. The community that we have built PharmaChem with Neha is also one such initiative to help budding professionals. So you can freely keep posting your questions and engage in such interactions. Some people send me messages that the videos that we are posting are helping them to crack the job interview. 
it really gives me a great satisfaction you know that we are able to make an impact in someone else's life and that person remembers that and then sending message to me right what else do we need okay so i will just suggest you join the professional groups or communities which will help you to grow and learn the regulatory concept sometime i feel disappointed as the technical video that i post after lots of hard work and efforts they do not reach to many people and they don't get the sufficient views that they deserve on the other hand i see some tiktoks video with some nonsense content have been viewed by lakhs of people so of course it's disappointing to see how social media is killing our time without even our knowledge but the choice is yours what content you want to consume and how serious you are about building up and shaping your career and learning new things it depends on you so lots of information is available online and people are there to help and we can make use out of it right then the next is stay updated with the industry trend like following the trends in fashion or tech gadgets we also need to keep up the uh, latest trends in regulatory affairs right so try to attend webinars read industry journals and follow regulatory news yeah you can also find some good mentors who can help you to shape your journey in regulatory affairs you can reach out to me by a linkedin or by a gmail both have been given in the description box i know many people keep reaching out to me with their questions and seeking guidance and maybe my response can be delayed sometimes but as soon as i get time from my other commitments and with my full time job right i do i have a full time job so whenever i get time from all these commitments i try to respond to as many as questions i can so if i have not responded to you so far it's just that i have not looked into it and i will try to get back to you at the earliest i am thinking to start a career guidance program where i i will keep half an hour slot on the weekend to have one to one conversations for the career guidance let me know if you are interested in this i'll plan something accordingly so these are the five steps which you can follow if you are planning to start your career in regulatory affairs in the end i would say if you have got the passion for making a difference and if you have the curiosity to explore this field which is a perfect blend of science technology law and business this could definitely be the path forward for you reach out to me in case you have any further questions and tell me in the comment section below what excites you the most about a career in regulatory affairs until then Keep exploring, keep growing and stay tuned.